All right, folks, so we're going to get started here. Uh, if you don't know me already, my name is Paige Harlock. I am the Partnerships and Youth Program Manager at CGLCC. Uh, we have a small but mighty team in the room today, but I know there's a lot of folks watching online. Uh, so hi to everybody here. Uh, before we get started, I just want to remind folks that you can find more information about the speakers, more information about the rest of the agenda online on our website. Um, but now I want to introduce Retail Renaissance, Small Business Look into the future, and we have with us today Shanella Theva Ryan. <laughs> First of all, be very impressed that she said my name so well because that has not happened in my 20 years of working on Bay Street. This is the very first time. Um, and she did say my bio is online, but it's very boring, so. <laughs> I can explain myself to you right now. So as she said, I'm Shanala Thave Ryan. I'm the Retail Commerce Senior Manager at Interac, and I'm also the Small Business Programs Lead at Interac. Um, it is lovely to see all of you in person. Um, the three lovely people in the front row are all uh, Interac folks, so feel free to ask them any questions you want. Um, and I do apologize, I'm going to speak with speaking notes today because I've forgotten how to memorize things um, in the last two years. Uh, also forgot how to walk in heels, so I'm in flats today. So it's a whole situation. Um, so, uh, Interac, first of all, is a very proud member of the LGBTQ plus Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and so we're very excited to be here today at the CGLCC Global Business Summit um, to speak about how Canadian businesses can adapt to this changing world, right? And as we all know, because of the pandemic, it has changed considerably. So today, that's what we're here to talk about. Confronting this changing landscape um, is going to be critically important for the LGBTQ plus community, right? Um, I actually found out a fact from Peter, from his notes, so thank you, Peter. Um, this community uh, amounts to $22 billion of gross corporate revenue for a year. That's an insane amount of money. $22 billion a year is not something to sneeze at, right? So obviously we at Interact wanna make sure that Canadian LGBTQ plus businesses succeed in the coming years. So, what does this mean? See, apologies, I used, I'm used to sitting down and just clicking. So clearly, <laughs> clearly I'm missing all this stuff, right? <laughs> uh, if all of you can put your names on a piece of paper and just hold it in front of your face, that might be easier for me. <laughs> um, so first, if you'll indulge me a little bit, because I'm very Interact proud, I wanna brag a little bit about Interact. Um, so, Many of you are probably very familiar with the Interact brand, um, but you might be familiar with it for different reasons. You all know it as your debit card, the one in your wallet, right? So if you have a bank account in Canada, you have an Interact debit card in your wallet. We are so much more than simply your Interact debit card. Although that's what I take care of, so be proud of it. Uh, <laughs> Um, so what we are, from a commerce perspective, is a company that allows Canadians to transact digitally, both um, online and in store, right? So anyone can transact with Interact Debit and feel confident because it is a phenomenal, um, phenomenal way to do it and it's an easy and uh, safe way to, uh, to do it. We also have world-class privacy, fraud mitigation, governance, and digital ID and authentication expertise. Right? So simply put, what Interact does is that we, we allow Canadians to transact safely and with confidence. We have over 250 financial institutions that connect to Interact, right? which is very surprising to those of you who only know the five that are on Bay Street. Uh, but there are over 250 financial institutions in Canada, if you count all the credit unions. They all connect to Interact, and this allows consumers to do about 18 million transactions a day. Right? So whether that is sending money through e-transfer, whether that is doing a point of sale transaction, whether it's doing an in-app transaction, 18 million, uh, Canadian, sorry, 18 million transactions are done a day, which is impressive considering that we only have 38 million people in Canada. Right? So what the stats on this slide kind of tell you is that just kind of the breadth of what Interact does. And so what the most important thing to remember is that Interact is very connected to the future of retail conversation. And the reason we, are, we do want to be part of that conversation is because we want to remain that gold standard uh, for all of our merchant communities, right? Especially the small business community because they're the ones who are generally hit the hardest. Walmart can weather all of this, right? right? It's the small local businesses that can't. Um, although they did complain a lot during <laughs> the pandemic. 
Um, so knowing the important role that we play, what Interact is, is we did some surveys ourselves. We went out and talked to consumers and asked them why they've changed their preferences, how they've changed their preferences for paying in the last two years, right? And remember, when someone does something for two years, they're generally going to do it for forever after that. So here's the most obvious statement you'll get. COVID-19 has tremendously changed how people transact in Canada, right? I love to say that because everyone's like, well, duh, obviously, <laughs> right? So just take a look at a couple of stats. Um, I love stats because I'm a dork, um, but I promise you they make sense. So as you can see from the graph in the top left, Canadians said shopping and supporting local is more important to them because of the pandemic, right? Think about why this is. There's two different reasons for it. First and foremost, you're shopping local because everyone heard, oh, local businesses are being affected, it's really bad, et cetera, et cetera. But then our world also shrunk, right? So instead of going two or three blocks to a larger store, we'd rather stay close because it was safer, it was easier. And so all of that changed their habits, right? Then on the top right there, you're gonna see that 66% of Canadians believe that businesses that fail to adapt to allow digital payments will struggle. What are digital payments? As Soon as you hear the word digital, you think online. That's not true. Digital payments simply means an alternative to cash, right? As much as everyone thinks, oh, cash is gone, it's not. Cash is still around. It accelerated um, its, its movement before, but there are still businesses, and those of us who go to Pacific Mall will know <laughs> that still take cash, right? These are not businesses that are gonna survive. These are businesses that are going to struggle, right? There might be one or two that serve really good food that'll survive, but otherwise they're not going to. So 70% um, of Canadians believe that if businesses offer debit in store, they should also offer debit online. And this corresponds with the stat that says 72% believe that the option to pay with debit when checking out online or making a purchase in app or in store is vital. Right? What this means to Canadians is that the way that we pay in store is the way they want to pay online. It's plain and simply put, nobody wants a difference. Right? So what's most important to remember from this slide is that retailers have to adapt. If you fail to adapt, you're going to fail as a business. Right? You have to do what the customer wants. We all know this, customers are the most important and they direct how we do things. That's why Honestly, during the pandemic, what suddenly happened? Walmart, right, the largest retailer in the world, actually Costco is now the largest, but they're close, got contactless. Why did Walmart avoid contactless for a long time? Because contactless costs more than chip and pin. So Walmart said, no, we're not doing it. We're not updating our terminals. But consumers pushed Walmart, the largest retailer in the world, to move, to move to a digital um, uh, way of paying. So, as I said the, in the previous slide, all that stats were um, Interact's proprietary surveys. So, we wanted to show that it's not just Interact saying all this. Uh, Payments Canada has done their own surveys, right? So, what they've said is that 43% of Canadians say that the pandemic has changed the way they shop. Pretty obvious. Every one of us has done it, right? In the first two graphs, you see that 52% of Canadians report using less cash than pre-COVID. Again pretty obvious. And then 37% report that they did not expect to return to use to cash once the pandemic is over. How many of you have cash in your wallet right now? Wow, I am impressed. I only have cash because I took it from my husband this morning. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm impressed for those who are watching virtually. There were like five people in this room who have cash in their wallet. Nobody from Interact, by the way, raised their hand. Uh, so more, and so anyway, so what we're saying is that more Canadians are becoming more and more uncomfortable touching terminals, using cash, et cetera, right? Even that simple act of touching that terminal is, is not okay, right? We don't want it. We want that contactless. Again, why Walmart moved, right? And it's why all of the major payment brands suddenly raised their contactless limits to 250. That was really fun when, um, when the, the credit cards announced it. That was a great call that I had with my boss that morning. <laughs> um, so 
this is what businesses have to realize. They have to remember. You have to go with the times. If right now you're not taking um, contactless payments because you think it's too expensive, that's going to cause some friction with your customers that you don't want to have. Omnichannel, it's an interesting word, isn't it? And it's a word that everyone hears and no one understands, right? It actually took me a little while to understand it and I've been in payments for a while. So we like to say that Interact understands the omnichannel experience and we do, right? So we wanna make sure that we provide this omnichannel experience to retailers. So as I said, don't worry if you haven't heard the term because I'm gonna explain it to you. I see, I, I heard someone say, I don't know. I don't know what it means. It's a, it's a weird one, isn't it? So plain and simply put, during the pandemic, we witnessed growing demand for what we call frictionless payments, right? Omnichannel payments or frictionless payments, as we'll talk about. So what do we mean by omnichannel? Omnichannel simply means taking your customer and putting them at the center of the payment, right? So the key to Omnichannel is providing what we call a consistent customer experience. So the customer doesn't have to think about paying, right? So think about, think about shopping on Uber Eats, right? Or skip the dishes, which again, if I ask you to raise your hands, every one of you will do it, right? Um, my, my pants didn't fit this morning because of it. Um, <laughs> none of my blazers either. <laughs> um, but what happens when you shop on there? You don't think about that payment experience, right? What do you do? You go, you order, and then if you have Apple Pay or Google Pay, it's that side click, right? Or if you have an older phone, it's that thumbprint. That's all it is. So you don't think about going and finding your card or think about, oh, do I need like, cash when the delivery guy comes? None of that exists anymore. You've taken the pain point, you've taken that thought of payment out of a customer's head, right? So as soon as the customer stops thinking about paying, they're more likely to pay because it's not, it's that friction of going and finding your wallet, um, which nobody ever figures out in their house, is gone, right? So multi-channel is the other word that you guys will hear. So what multi-channel does is it gives your customer options to pay, um, different options to pay, right? So you can pay with credit card online, point of uh, debit on, in the store, you can pay with cash if you're picking up something from outside. That's not gonna work. What you want is if someone buys something online, they should be able to pay the same way, then return it in the store, get their money back in the same way, right? They shouldn't have to think about, oh, did I, did I buy it with my, my Interact debit card? Did I buy it with my Amex? What did I buy it with? It shouldn't matter. You should just make it as easy and simple as possible so that the next time they're ready to buy and they, they've had a bad experience with you, they're like, oh, I don't necessarily know if I wanna do that again. So. What does this mean for retailers, right? As I said earlier, the heart of the matter, the re all the research basically points to the importance of digital payments. And again, I will say digital payments is simply just an alternative for cash, right? So businesses that continue to adapt to this, you're gonna be survive the post-pandemic world. In fact, you're gonna thrive the post-pandemic world, right? Making the customer think about the payment is how you lose the customers, how you get card abandonment, right? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you speak to whoever you speak to about your payments and make sure that you can switch over in a fast and easy, secure way and in a way that won't take away from your business for the day, right? So how does Interact support this? I'm going to tell you guys a little story. This is my favorite story in the world. So when I was a teenager, a million and one years ago, um, I used to work at Dominion right? Uh, and think about how long this was because Dominion no longer exists in Ontario. <laughs> um, and we used to have this one gentleman that came in. He actually happened to be the father of a friend of mine. Um, and he used to do a full shop, right? Massive cart, just full with stuff, always, and like a million different steaks. I don't know why he wanted so many steaks, but he always filled it. And he was the least patient human being I've ever met in my entire life, right? He would go up, have this huge cart, look at the line, and if there's more than two people in front of him, leave his cart and go. He was like, nope, I'm done, I'm out. And, and, we, and we used to watch this and think about teenagers. We want to do the least work possible. I'm like, oh no, we're like, now we're gonna have to reshelve all this stuff, this sucks, right? So what we used to do is we used to watch him and we used to, somebody used to follow him through the aisles. And when we knew he was getting close, we rushed and opened up another cash register. 
like not joking. <laughs> so we made sure that he was able to check out fast. This was my very first experience with card abandonment. And I didn't even realize what it was until I got older. But this is what I mean. Make things as frictionless as possible for your customers, right? So the pan, I, wanna, I want each of you to stop and think for a second about the last time you abandoned a cart, right? So think about the last time you shopped on any website, any app, right? Why did you not finish the process, right? Outside of, oh my God, this is, the shipping is much more expensive than I thought it was, right? Why did you do it? Was it because you had to get up and find your credit card? I see a lot of nodding heads. <laughs> yes, right? And you're like, nope, I'm out. I'm not doing this. This is too much work, right? This is where there is friction. So you want to take that away from the customer. You want to make sure that they don't think about it, that they don't get up, right? As soon as you get up off that couch, you're done, right? Um, especially because when I get up off the couch and look for my wallet, my husband's sitting there going, what are you buying now? Uh, <laughs> God bless you, Amazon, for not making me do that. <laughs> so if there's anything at the point of sale that stops it, you're going to have your cart abandoned. Okay? Amazon, as an example, puts their cart abandonment rate, and they make their stuff so easy, at 70%. Right? Usually it's around 68 to 80% cart abandonment rate. That is a huge number. And most people don't think about that, right? Amazon alone, like Amazon makes it so easy to shop and it's 70%. And small businesses, I guarantee you, it's gonna be a lot more because most of them don't take Apple Pay or Google Pay um, on their payment or they don't save uh, payment credit card details, right? So Interact solutions are built for merchants, right? This is a very important thing. Um, and th what we do is we make sure that customers have everything that they need to, to move forward. So again, I'm going to brag a little bit about Interac. Why is Interac the best solution for customers or for merchants? First of all, we have what we call a good funds model, right? Good funds model is, literally means that. You have to have good funds in your bank account in order to make that payment, right? So if the customer doesn't have money in their account, that transaction is not going to go through. So what does that mean for merchants? It means two things. One, no chargebacks, right? And two, no reversals. So if that customer makes that payment, that money is yours. If there happen to be fraud, the liability lies with the issuer. The issuer pays the customer back, not you, the merchant, right? So that's fantastic. That's not something you see with the other payment networks. So again, I'm bragging. The second thing we have are very low fees, right? If you go to our Intract.ca website, this is not a sales pitch. I'm just letting you know what it is. <laughs> Right? I know it sounds a little like a sales pitch, but it's not. Um, we do. We, that's what we pride ourselves on, right? So debit cards generally don't have loyalty. So we uh, take care of the other side of our equation, right? Credit cards take care of the consumers. Debit cards take care of the merchants. So what we do is we make sure that we have our fees as low as possible, right? So always as a merchant, what I recommend is you go onto each payment network's website and take a look at the fees. Right? Before you go to an acquirer, before you go to an ISO, whatever it is, take a look at our fees and make sure that you understand what you're actually being charged by the network. Right? And finally, we have what we call near real-time transactions. Right? What's the most important thing for a small business? Money in the bank account. Right? That money is what pays your vendors. It's what pays, your, uh, like it's what pays for your goods and services. It's what pays for your employees. Right? So what we make sure is that when you get that money, right, from the customer, that it's in your bank account as soon as possible, right? So because it doesn't have to go through that clearing process to make sure that there was money there because we know there was, okay? So let's talk about frictionless payments again, right? You have an online store and you have a point of sale bricks and mortar store, right? What you want to make sure you do as a business is to make sure that whatever you have online, as I've said, right? So say you have um, Interact Debit, Visa, MasterCard, Amex available, right? At, at your point of sale. When I go and shop online, I wanna make sure that I have the same options. Because remember, people don't necessarily have all those payment options with them, right? They wanna make sure that whatever they have in their wallet, they're able to use. This is very important. And the other thing is that there are often heavy debit users 
that use debit only because that's their budgeting tool, right? And so they won't uh, convert to credit card because that's all that's available. They'll just abandon the cart. They'll be part of that 70, 80% that walks away. So our suggestion is always make use of all the tools you have, right? So Intrac has Intrac Debit Online, Intrac Contactless, um, Intrac in-app payments. So if you can take in-app payments um, on Google Pay or Apple Pay, right? And you can do point of sale payments through Google Pay, Apple Pay, and Samsung Pay. Okay. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about Interact eTransfer for Business. Um, this is not my product line, so I do my very best to talk about it, uh, but I'm very proud of it. So, what happened a few, a few years ago was that Interact realized that we wanted to be a little bit better for businesses, right? We wanted to offer businesses something as an alternative and not just taking payments. It's how do you business pay? And we realized a lot of businesses were doing e-transfers. Most people have an e-transfer limit of about $3,000 a day. So say you have a $10,000 um, vendor bill to pay. They were sending three, four e-transfers at a time, right? Very cumbersome, very annoying, and very hard to track, right? So what our lovely e-transfer team did was they built e-transfer for business. What this product does is it has a higher transaction limit of $25,000, right? So you can pay your vendors up to $25,000 in one e-transfer, which, which is incredible, right? And for a small business, that means you're paying a vendor very, very quickly. Um, you can send and receive this, these funds instantly. So you're not writing that check and then waiting a week, right? This is received within five seconds, okay? Second thing is the, we have something called rich remittance data. So, and also, um, so plain and simply put, this rich remittance data, what it does is you can actually fill in information about the vendor that you're paying or, you know, the customer or whatever it is within this transaction. So it's not like a regular e-transfer where you put just the email address and it goes off. You are able to put in account details or, um, uh, sorry, the, the invoice details so that somebody will know uh, what you're actually sending this details for, and then that actually gets sent back to you as well, so you have a tracking of it, right? And then also, along with just regular e-transfer, you have that send and receive email or text message that you can get, right, which is very important. So now that we've talked a little bit about um, all of the uh, different ways that Interact helps. I'm going to talk a little bit about a few customer journeys just so you understand how this stuff works in real life. Okay? So, our first lovely lady, Molly. I don't know where they found this picture, but this woman is so beautiful. Like, every time I look at her, I'm like, I'm very jealous of like, how nice she looks shopping in a store. <laughs> so, Molly um, has gone to a local boutique right? Uh, and the, uh, she, so she's visiting the local boutique on her tablet, right? So she got used to this during the pandemic. So this is a, a local store that she used to go to. Uh, they now have a website and she's able to pay. So Molly, um, what she's done is she's placed an order within the tablet, right? And what happens now? Instead of Molly going and finding her credit card, Molly has a little button on the checkout page that says pay with Google Pay. So she just clicks that button and as her details are saved, just seamlessly purchase is done, right? Nice and simple. Um, if she's on her tablet, she uses either her face ID or touch ID to get it done. If she's on her phone, same thing, right? You can also use your phone passcode to get it done. All much better than finding that credit card, right? So next day she receives notification that her order is ready and she just goes and picks it up from the store or she can have it shipped to herself. So, again, now Molly's been sprung, right? Uh, everything's open back up. Uh, no masks needed. We're all glorious. Uh, so the little apparel store she's having is having a sale, right? So what does she do? She goes in, she starts shopping. And what this apparel store can do, right, because it's going to be busy, as everyone knows, whoever's been to Costco on a Saturday in the last little while, it's ridiculous out there. Um, it's obviously busy, there's lots of people, and so she wants to go and shop, 
right? So she stands there in line, and there's like a huge lineup, and she is very much like my friend's father, who is going to abandon her cart. Uh, and so what she is, what she will do is she will say, okay, do I really want to stand here for 10 minutes? Do I not want to? Uh, do I need this stuff? And that's when the customer starts thinking. So it's like a real life cart abandonment, right? What can the, the store do to fix this? How many of you have heard of Square? Yes? Okay. So what Square has done, and now other acquirers, is they have made it easier for stores um, to have essentially m mobile terminals, right? So what you do is you download an app on your phone, on your personal device, or on the store's personal device, and then you Bluetooth just a tiny little white dongle to your, um, uh, to your phone or your tablet. What this allows you to do is it allows you to take payment of any kind, contactless or dip, right, wherever you are in the store. So instead of Molly having to stand in line, Molly now comes out of the change room and there could be a sales associate there going, hey Molly, do you want to just check out right here, right? She probably wouldn't know her name, but you know, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> A little too much, a <laughs> little too friendly. Um, but anyway, so sh Molly can check out right there instead of having to stand in line. And now Molly hasn't thought about it, right? Molly doesn't have time to say, oh, maybe I don't need these pants. Maybe I don't need this shirt, you know? Boom, checkout is done. Or what we can also do is um, Molly can also say to them, oh, maybe I, I don't know if I, these pants fit me. And so the store can say, Molly, you can do your quick shop online if you want, right? And so Molly can go on, she can order it, do the Google Pay again, and then have it delivered to the store, have it delivered to her home. Essentially what the store is doing is it's taking that payment thought away from Molly and saying, do what you want, um, however you want, let's, let's make this as easy as possible for you, right? So that's the whole point of frictionless payments. Frictionless. If I say that one more time, she's gonna, she's gonna be like, stop it. <laughs> so what happens when you bring all your comms folks to the table? <laughs> so, Intrac e-transfer, it's another option for you, right? A lot of the local restaurants, one thing that they didn't think about was, what do we do if we shut down? Because nobody thought about it, right? What do we do if we have to close our doors? Because all of them had point of sale terminals. They're like, yeah, yeah, we're ready. We have point of sale terminals, right? Um, usually most of them didn't, uh, like, you know, didn't think about it. You had takeout at the, in the store or takeout at the counter. So setting up a website was going to be costly, was going to be a lot, was taking payments was going to be a lot. It got very complicated. So what a lot of the local restaurants did was they said, we're going to take e-transfer. And that's still happening. And that's still an option, right? Small businesses, money matters to small business, right? That cost of setting up that extra payment, that extra website could matter. E-transfer is your alternative, right? Take it. So these are a number of different ways that Intrac helps, right? That Intrac, all our products really move businesses along. The crux of this, right? Forget Intrac, forget Visa, forget MasterCard, forget Amex. You as a business, needs to figure out what your customer wants, right? Most customers want to just be able to not think about the payment. The best way to not think about the payment is for you as a merchant to take all payment types, right? Obviously there's price differences, there's you know uh, different, different aspects that you have to think about, but do, do weigh the difference, right? Is it better to get that 80% card abandonment or is it better to pay a little bit extra to take all of the payment types instead of cash, right? My suggestion is always make sure you understand your customer base, right? Make sure you really think about them and then take every payment type. That's really what retail is going to be in the future, right? Even the largest merchants are now thinking about how to make things frictionless, right? The Canadian tires that you know had those long lineups to get those uh, curbside pickups, they thought about it, and now they're moving into like better online shopping, right? Better ways for you to check out. Same thing with Walmart. Same thing with the local business. Every single business has the same need, right? Obviously, a different bottom line, different margin, but same needs. Make the customer happy.
So that's essentially all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. And I'm happy to take any questions from online or in the room. Yeah. Thank you. Intrac, so the question was if I could fix, if I could fix if Intrac works in Florida. So it depends on the store. Intrac does work in Florida. Intrac works all over the US. Um, but. It depends on, it depends on the merchant, all right? Um, so I will tell you from personal experience, it works at Target. Uh, <laughs> it works very well at Target. <laughs> <laughs> a little too well at Target. Uh, but yes, it depends on the merchants, right? Um, and so we've worked for years actually to get more acceptance. And so it, it should work and most, uh, especially at, in Florida and any bordering state, it will work quite well. Um, I, like my honeymoon was in California and I used my debit card uh, as much as possible there, right? And it worked. Uh, so again, it depends on the merchant. But, you know, my suggestion is go to Target, look at the Oreos. It's uh, <laughs> my favorite aisle. <laughs> and your debit card will work there. So it is a newer concept. It's been around for about a year and a bit now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it is, yeah, it's, it's a little bit newer. So what, the way you take care of it is go to your financial institution um, and then have them set you up, right? And they will teach you all exactly how to do it uh, because it is not something that every single Canadian can do. And that we're purposeful on that, right? You don't want every single Canadian to be able to have a $25,000 um, e-transfer uh, push. What you want to do is limit this to businesses that are that are needing it. So you go and set up your business banking account, and then they will walk through um, how to take care of this, cool. right? Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So the question the question in the room um, was essentially around the B two B around e transfer for business, um, and how it wasn't essentially how you'd set it up, but that's how I answered it. Uh, but it was that it was a very interesting product that would be helpful um, for a lot of uh, vendors and businesses. So I, how I answered it was how you set it up, which is uh, that you go to your financial institution and have them do it for you. The best thing to do: have other people do things for you. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions in the room? None online. Okay. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.